the group assignment, uh, the group project assignment, and then I'm going to kind of walk you through what it looks like, uh, what my expectations are, and what you... So two weeks from two weeks from today, we will see each other again, and I... Uh, essentially, what I'm going for is I would like to have this, uh, this item completed, uh, but I'm going to walk through a little bit of it so you can kind of see what this, uh, what the details are. I have uploaded the digital version of this, so here's the big thing, okay? When, you, when you're done with the group project, you as a group will submit to me digital documents or you can print them, that's fine, but you're going to have to enter this information into a digital document, so, so Word, essentially, so not nothing crazy, but you're going to throw this information into Word. Uh, so if you go onto Canvas, uh, I already have this assignment set up and built there. So if you were to look at Canvas in Module 7, you can see it down here below. Uh, essentially, the midterm group of project assignment, if you click on it, the document campaign. Now, there's a lot of stages to the single release campaign, unfortunately, that we won't have time to necessarily address. But we are going to be assigning each of your individuals in your group a particular role, and they will do, to the best of their abilities, uh, they will outline specific items it, uh, that will be addressed here. Now, problem is, uh, so I'm going to show you the digital document. Problem is, I was only able to print out four pages of this. Uh, I think there were like 12 pages to this, okay? So, uh, yes, fun, right? So, um, but that's not 12 pages that one person is responsible for. Essentially, you guys will be in a team of uh, five, okay? So you'll be in teams of five. And each person will have a role and a responsibility. And what's on each of those individual pages that are beyond the first four is the manager's role, step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. The publicist's role, step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know, literally I just put step by step the things I, I expect you to do as a member of the team in releasing the single. Does that make sense? So you will join your team, you'll create your team, uh, you will fulfill a role. The only thing that, uh, I'll say this, you can choose your own artist, okay? You can choose a real artist or just a fictitious artist. Big thing is you're building a timeline campaign. And that's, that's the bigger element. You're, you're building a timeline campaign for how the single will essentially result in, from a logistics standpoint. So you're going to have to gather some research and some materials. You're going to generate a specific timeline. You will be provided a budget. The budgetary number here, I think, is $250,000, which is not a lot to account for each of the departments. So... All five of you as an individual are sharing this big number, okay? Um, which means it becomes a very small number, but it can be offset by having certain individuals make uh, use of other things. So like the individual that is responsible for uh, managing the tour will also have a show rate that's applied. So their offset to their budget is the fact that if they're going to book 20 shows, um, that they're also going to have a show rate, right, for the performance, times 20, which will allow their, uh, their budget to be offset. Now, of course, the budgetary numbers, as a result, these budgets are after production, and I noted that in there. These budgets do not include what will be paid out to the artist. These budgets are expense budgets only. Does that make sense? So, like, you're uh, essentially responsible for spending this money versus trying to make money off of it and then give money to the artist in this particular scenario. Um, so let's talk about the, the overall synopsis. So I'll just go down the chain. I'll walk you through it a little bit, and hopefully it won't be too difficult for you. I mean, it really isn't. It, it, it's outlined to the point where you could literally just kind of fill in the blanks. Develop, orchestrate, single release plan, budget, and timeline. So the big key here is we're going to release a single with a given artist. And notice the thing that's not included, but there is no record label, and there is no publisher in this assignment, Okay. So our expectation is that the record label and the publisher are already entities that exist as part of the record deal, but it's not something that you are directly dealing with. Does that make sense? You're not directly dealing with those particular elements. Instead, you are essentially the manager and the management team uh, that is provided to support the manager. So each group of the five will elect one manager, and your manager is essentially the leader of the team. They will logistically assign the other roles and they will make sure that the other roles fulfill the strategies and, uh, uh, and meet the goals that are set, um, that you guys essentially will establish. Um, you're going to develop the plan. The objective is to understand the logistics behind a single release, which they are um, somewhat tedious, but you, you won't even have to go into, like, if you're the tour manager, the only thing I asked of you is a tour artist. Oh, uh, come on. Sorry. I don't know why it keeps... 
jump it back and forth between here. But let's go. Look, going back to the objectives, uh, develop team communication, understand budgeting for a single re release. Now, the budget for a single release is actually quite high. Uh, in this instance, there are limited dollars that are available. Um, so, um, uh, to best um, promote your individuals in the areas that they may be strong. So if any one of if your team members that you choose for your team is good at social media, that might be where you want to steer them. Um, the marketing elements on here, social media and the publicist are specifically marketing. The radio promoter has marketing elements to it. Are you freaking kidding me? Um, but uh, one of the things that they, they have to kind of consider of what they're dealing with is specifically developed by the publicist. So for the radio, and of course the actual production of the music, so the radio uh, promoter is dealing with media that's provided by the publicist, but they're also having to deal with uh, the actual media that was generated by the artist. And then the tour manager, of course, gets to create the tour release, uh, establish media interviews in conjunction with promoter and publicist. Uh, we'll talk about that. There's some short itinerary stuff, not really that big, in that, not that in depth. Total working budgets, 200 grand. Steps to completion are really simple. I made them two steps, but there's a bunch of steps in between that I assigned to the individual sheets, so your individual roles. Uh, steps to completion. Step one, assign the roles, choose a manager. Pretty simple, right? So obviously you're going to pick a team of five people. You're then going to want to choose who's doing what, okay? Um, you will also uh, choose a release date, and it has to fall into quarter two of 2017. Um, so your timeline is not releasing in December. Your timeline is releasing more like April or May, all right? Because that's more that's what the more realistic timeline. Because by the time you set up a plan, you still have to establish you know all the things that are going to be set in motion for that plan. Uh, tour, uh, touring for those of you who are the de developing the tour, the touring happens in three stages, or really it happens in multiple stages. But I broke it down to three stages. Stage one is promotion of the release of the single, which happens before the single is released. The stage two is re uh, prom uh, touring while the single is in the midst of being released. And step three is elevating from that position and following up essentially with touring the, the months that follow the release to continue to get that release promoted, right? So um, touring actually does not wait until the release day. Uh, radio promotion does not wait until the release day. So a couple of keys here when you're building your timelines. Um, you can't have your release date be an, uh, April 10th and have your radio promotion start April 10th. Does that make sense? Radio promotion, the promotion to radio should be established in the months prior because you, in the promotion for radio, uh, or should I say promotion to radio, the goal is, is to get the radio stations to play the song. And the radio stations don't just take a song and throw it in the queue and play it. Uh, essentially someone is in charge of what goes on air and they set up the queue and they don't set up that queue one day and on the radio next week is already programmed at the radio stations so uh, I mean unless an actual jockey is literally doing requests blah 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 it's already in the queue and they literally just hit the button and away it goes so important part about that is again your radio promotion has to happen prior to the release date Does that makes sense um, you know, we could get into the really specific elements. And if you were a non-existing artist, six months prior. If you're an existing artist, two to three months prior uh, is just helpful because all they have to do is just make a plan um, to make it kind of easy to get them. Oh yeah, no problem. You got a new single. Here you go. If you're like a big artist, though, you know they're not really looking at it, going, oh, you know, we have to squeeze you in. They're more like, all right, we're bumping everybody out of the way, and we're gonna throw this in. So, you know, it, it does depend on where the artist's career is. It, that establishes how easy it is to get them in the queue. But when we look at these roles, your deliverables will be a single release campaign summary, which is the element that does exist here on page two, and two, three, and four. The single release summary is basically just going to say, you know, who's the artist, what's the single name, what, what three fl platforms are we releasing the single to? Now, plat by platform, I mean, is it going to... CD uh, at Target, is it going to CD at Walmart, is it going to CD at, uh, on Amazon, iTunes or on Amazon, is it, where is it being released essentially? There's a million digital places you can go for streaming, there's so many, I mean there's thousands of places you could sell other than iTunes, um, but you can sell to, of course you're going to probably want the bigs, you know, uh, you want to include the bigs in that platform, so you guys as a group will decide what those are, 
You'll pick your release date. You'll pick your campaign start date, preferably. Now, notice there's three goals uh, listed here. And in the goals that are listed here, there are one, two, three goals listed. And in each goal, there's a multitude of strategies and a bunch of blank spaces on the summary. What's going to happen is, is you as a group, you as a group will establish what your uh, you as a group will establish what your goals are. So it, uh, obviously, your first goal is probably to promote the single. Um, your second goal will, will maybe uh, maybe want to be something a little more focused, like generate fans, uh, because promoting your single is not going to do you jack if you don't have anybody to buy it. Even if you got a billboard out on you know Sunset Strip. Uh, if if you have no fans, no one cares. You know what I mean. That's you gotta have to generate some fans. So your one of your goals can be easily be to generate fans. Who do you think is gonna be really responsible for that? The, uh, yeah, I mean think about it. Social media will be huge. Tour management will be huge because it's live performance. The radio promoter will be huge because they're you know. So so notice it's not a singular effort, right? It's gonna be in order. You want to generate more fans. There's a lot of Goals, that's a big goal, and there's a lot of strategies that will support it. So strategy number one might be get on radio. Strategy number two may be generate social media activity. Strategy number three, and obviously these are blank, so I'm just blowing these out at you. Strategy number four may be you know, um, you know, develop some sort of uh, um, uh, giveaways or some sort of pre-sale, and I listed that in some of these subsheets. So let me look if I can even show you this. Sad. I don't know what's going on with this thing. I'll go through it as fast as I can before I lose my connectivity. This is available on Canvas, so you can immediately, if you have your computer or phone, if you want to just go up and download that so you can actually look at this document, you can start to do it now. Um, today, our goal, our, our goal today is for you to, because of time, is really for you to just pick a team and assign your roles. Um, obviously, we don't meet next week, so the way that you're going to want to Oper, uh, operate this as it will be due uh, two weeks from now. So you just want to make a simple plan with your team. You could probably get this busted out in one meeting. Uh, what you should do is make a plan. Who has which roles? You can then go online as an individual and read through the sections of your steps and then fulfill those steps. Make a meeting with your team in between now and two weeks from now. Go meet with your team or talk over the phone. You just need to have conversations about what your plans are. Your manager needs to say yes or no, this works or this doesn't. Your radio promoter and your tour manager have to talk a lot because they're, they're going to be trying to collaborate with what dates align uh, if they want to send you to a radio, uh, essentially a radio interview in a given town. And so that's something that you'll see. It's listed out here. And then you'll just uh, uh, fulfill this and submit it digitally. Now, the easy way to do this uh, also is if when you guys are meeting, have one person, you know, maybe you bring all your docs in, send them to one person, have that one person assemble them all and throw them all into the same doc. Then you can just package that up, send it to me, okay? What I don't necessarily want is for everybody to send me their individual portion because then I have to piece together whether or not it works as a group. And that's kind of like the big deal. One of the objectives is for you guys to work as a team. Um, so uh, if you're not a team player, um, look up on YouTube how to be a team player and then uh, you should be fine. I'm gonna have to assign them to a group. Yeah, Hanif. Okay, and I don't mind putting them in your group if you if you want that. Yeah. Uh, if there's anybody that's not here that you guys want to elect to be in your group, you can you can establish that. At the end of tonight, I need to make sure I have everybody's names on who's in what group because I need to. I'm gonna blast out an email and say here are your groups. Um, the only issue is is that I think there are enough people here that. I don't want to make a group out of an entire group of people that aren't here today because someone should be a representative from here that can explain what the heck is going on, All, even though I'm sending them the video. Uh, okay, let me, let me kind of highlight this, and then I will let you guys break up and do your thing. The manager is going to oversee uh, the entire campaign and who's doing what. These are the goals of the manager, okay? The goals of the manager, uh, uh, or I should say the step-by-steps, are somewhat simplistic, but they're also a little cumbersome. The manager is going to be the one that selects the three platforms that will be to, re to be released. Because the manager typically is in charge of hiring the team, the manager will assign the roles. Now they can have a conversation about what roles you want to have, but at the end of the day, the manager is in charge. The manager also is the one that should be filling out, okay? So the manager really should be the one that fills out the summary. 
and takes in all of your input. But you guys can fill this out individually and submit it to the manager, and the manager can say yes or no, this might need to be adjusted, and re re review and approve. So that might be how you want to tackle this. Um, so your manager needs to be somewhat good at uh, organizing. Uh, the publicist, you can look at like the publicist uh, stuff here is they're going to develop the strategy to fulfill all three goals. They will be given an individual budget out of the piece of the pie, so out of $200,000. Um, one of the things they're going to have to do is they're going to develop the strategy, whatever goals you choose. So if your goal was we want to put the band on, on the moon, then that's going to be one of your goals. You guys, you're, as a team, you have to figure out how to do it. Uh, if you were to just be realistic and say, no, instead we want them to play the Illinois State Fair, and that's one of your goals, you know, the team has to fulfill it. Okay, does that make sense? So as a team, that's something you do. But you're going to develop the strategy to fulfill the goals, and you're going to propose a preliminary budget and plan to the manager, which means that so when you guys meet the first time, you should have your pre preliminary plan. The manager is going to go yes or no. Most of the time it's going to be based upon the budget. So the managers kind of have to go, you, you want to use $100,000, but you want to use $100,000, but you want to use $100,000, and obviously that won't work, so we have to kind of whittle away at it a little bit, change a little bit of the scope, make it realistic, all right? Um, propose the final budget and plan a manager. Now, in each group, I created some strategies. The, the easy one for the publicist is we have to have a media release. Now, the good news is for whoever chooses the publicist, uh, this can be based upon an artist that already exists, or you could literally just choose one out of thin air, and you can make believe all you want with your media release. <coughs> they were born with three toes and four eyes, but somehow they're okay, and they play a mean banjo. That's your story for your media release, okay? Image, images to support the media release, though, uh, obviously you won't have official images if the artist does not exist. So you could literally just go on Google and just steal a photo of some weird artist and make that your media release. The big thing is, is that you understand that you have to have images to support your media release and your overall look. And I think that's the, the big thing here. Uh, strategy three will be you'll have to identify 10 local news and media outlets to submit media releases to. Now, this is easy if you in Las Vegas. Boom, right? Vegas 7, you, you'll find, uh, the you know, uh, in the RJ you could use, the music section of the RJ. Uh, but there's all sorts of stuff. Vegas Rocks Magazine, there's all those kinds of things. Uh, also, you know, turn on the television. You have your local news stations that all have music segments usually during the day. So you could easily include um, KVVU, and, and which is Fox or KMU. Um, you know, and so you're going to identify who the outlets are that you would be submitting media releases to. You're going to identify 20, this is the interesting part, 20 major news and media outlets to submit releases to. So uh, the 20 majors would include any major magazine. It could be online uh, or print. Uh, obviously, you probably want to go with MSNBC or you want to go with, uh, you know, some sort, sort of version of Fox uh, you can even go with ESPN if you if you feel like an, your artist could go well with uh, sports stuff like that. You know, um, you're going to compile this list of your projected targets. Uh, from here, you'll have to uh, you're going to develop who would you invite to your single release party on a local level. Um, you know, so who which of those stations or or outlets are going to use? So your radio promoter. So now we're done with publicity. Yay. Radio promoter is going to kind of do the same thing. They're going to they're going to uh, they're going to create a single media release email, and the radio promoter gets to to borrow this information a little bit from whoever develops the, the media release called the publicist. Uh, they're going to release this. You're going to gener, gen, essentially generate an email that says you know um, uh, something you would send to the radio stations. Uh, hello, my name is, and I represent blah blah blah. The, the artist name. We have the single release coming. Uh, here is the media release information, and that's literally all, all that would be put here. So you would literally fill it in right here. Strategy two, you're going to create a radio tour in conjunction with a tour manager. So if the tour manager says we're going from Dallas to uh, Fort Worth to Houston uh, to um, Arkansas or yeah or Mexico, you're looking at it going, okay, well, we have these tour dates, and these are the radio stations that might align best with where we're going to be in throughout the country. Um, so you guys can can essentially you know make a design. Now on the tour manager side, I broke it down into regions. So you're probably going to want to just you don't want to go from you know Boston to to Nashville. You're going to want to stay in these kind of area you know these regions. So you could easily do a west coast or south uh, you know southwest uh, or a southeast or a midwest. You know, but you're going to have to make a range. 
You know, you'll identify national radios with contact info to market the single. So this one will take a little more research. You're going to, uh, for radio promotions, you're going to look at the 10 national radio spots and just figure out who their program manager is. That's the key word. Program managers are in charge of what content goes on the radio. So you can begin to look that information up. Identify college radio as well. You're going to just provide a list. These are the radio stations and these are the contact info. This is how I get to them. Satellite radio will also be chosen at this point in time. Um, the reason we're going to heavily want to pursue radio is for two reasons we talked about several times. One, generation of profit. Two, what? The biggest one the radio gives us. Yeah, exactly. It'll do way more than, it, honestly, it'll do way more than your publicists can do on their own. You get on the radio one, one day in a, in a, in a major market, it, you're, you're essentially being broadcast to millions of people. And that gives you the opportunity to show your stuff, you know. Uh, so, yeah, you're, that's going to be a big one. It's, it's a fun element to think about. Your social media manager, don't take this too lightly. How many of you are on social media? Everybody probably, right? You're all on social media. Now, here's the issue with social media I think that has to be focused on. Your social media campaign has to be aligned so that it looks like something congruent with itself on different platforms. So Twitter and Facebook don't have to share the same post, but they have to target the same, essentially they target the same goal. So if you're trying to improve visibility and generate fans, you got to find a way on Facebook to create an image for yourself that generates fans. When, the, when you go to Twitter, you want to generate fans on Twitter. So what you don't want to do, this is what bands do all the time and it's super lazy and no one pays attention. What you don't want to do is link all 10 of your social media accounts and send out one blast that go on all of them. The reason why is because what's the point of Twitter? I don't know. I think Twitter's stupid. Okay, but as someone who doesn't think the Twitter's stupid, what's the point of Twitter? Short, simple message. Yeah. Essentially abbreviated messages. Question with Twitter. Okay, if I said I was to live tweet, what does that mean? Yeah, well, in, in most cases, it's some sort of, like, update. If I was live-tweeting, like, this class, I'd be like, oh, I'm so tired right now. In the next 10 minutes, I, I got the munchies. And then 20 minutes later, uh, we're finally on to slide two, you know, and uh, you know, right? It's, a, it's like a continual update, but it's in those short blurbs. Obviously, that doesn't work for Facebook. If you had a friend on Facebook that posted every, like, five or ten minutes, would that be annoying? Absolutely. Oh, and, yeah. and that's not the platform for doing something like that. So you have to understand that you can't just broadcast on all your social medias and just do the same same st strategy. So whoever is social media manager has to look at it and go, we're going to market to these outlets and we have to have a particular strategy defined for each element. So if photos, and, and, and that's all we, we focus on having these really nice clean photos or if we want to have really dumb behind the scenes photos or however, whatever the approach is, it's not the outlet to necessarily go in and, and tweet. On Instagram, doesn't work, right? You can put messages on there, but it's not the same vibe, right? It's the same thing as if I sent you, uh, if I wrote uh, an essay, you know, or let's say, let's say I wrote a blog, and I sent it to you via text message, as an actual text message, not a link, but like I sent you my blog as a text message. That's like probably thirty texts long, and they're just like. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't fit the platform. Right? You guys follow me, right? So what you're going to have to do is choose the outlets. You're going to have to tailor social media outlets, tailor to social media. And so you're going to create single release announcements for each social media campaign. Beauty of it is, is you build one generated overall announcement, okay? On Instagram, it needs to be visual. On Facebook, it could be both visual. You could even have like video content. Obviously, you're not going to make video content. But, but you could say, hey, the campaign is going to include a video and it's going to have this blurb. Do also remember that on Facebook that an entire post is not visible when you look at the feed. And so a lot of times people don't want to go through that extra step or only a percentage of the people that are going to be on that extra step and go hit that link and then go off to some yonder place. So you kind of have to tailor those social media. I, hopefully you guys get what I'm saying, right? Yeah. You're gonna, whoever takes that role. Create, okay, now here's the fun part. Whoever handles social media gets to also be the fun individual to develop incentives for pre-ordering of singles. So what that means is they get to develop what kind of incentives will be included for a pre-order of a single. So if someone decided they wanted to pre-order the single, 
what would they get? Did they get a free T-shirt? Did they get a free hat? Did they get a free vinyl? Did they get a you know? Did they get a letter from the artist? Did they get a uh, a house party? You know, um, and you know, I'll be honest. It sounds like a lot of work, but I've done several house parties as incentives to release times, and they're actually a ton of fun. Uh, and surprisingly, I had a couple house parties where we gained more fans at a house party of a hundred people than we gained at a show with a thousand people because everybody gets to meet and greet and talk. And we get to have that whole like one-on-one -on -one feel, and then they you know take photos and they post that and they share that and they say hey guess what you know check out these people versus going to play a show where they all go watch the show and then by the time they see the entire show and they go home, they're spent so they're not going to go on necessarily you know their social medias and just go blurb about it or whatever. So it's kind of a different perspective. So fan generation campaigns via social media, there's a positive and a negative being in marketing. Positive in, being mar in marketing is you get to do cool, fun, out-of-the-box stuff. Negative side of marketing is you're only as good as the attention that you draw in marketing. So when you get into social media, if you were to jump into, like if I said, hey, I will hire you to be a social media campaign manager. P plus side is that's cool. You get to be on social media all day. Downside is, is there is an expectation of generation of numbers. And that's where you have to create fan generation campaigns. Fan generation campaigns, you can think outside of the box, but they could be as easy as send us your favorite picture of the artist that you took at a show and you will, you know, you'll win this or you could, you know, maybe there's an incentive. Um, long time ago, uh, like Lifehouse. Lifehouse did this, you know, huge fan campaign. A lot of artists have done it. You know, uh, essentially send us a clip of you singing our song and we'll make it a music video. And of course they did it with a bunch, a ton of their fans. So they just took all these clips of people singing their songs and they cut it up, made it their official music video. And they never had to go shoot like a real video for that one. And uh, think about it. They didn't have to pay anything in production. All their fans are involved and included, you know, and it, it makes it a fun fan generating campaign, right? So you kind of have to think, you know, a little bit outside the box. This is the fun. I would pick this one if I was you because this one's a fun role. Um, the only downside to it is there's a couple of things you have to kind of work out. The, re the tour release announcements for the social media campaign. What does a tour release announcement look like? You might want to go and, and strategize, look, do some research, but you know your tour research announcements are there. Tour manager, this is a little somewhat tedious, but this one's also fun. Tour manager creates the routes, they generate itinerary, all that stuff, but, but they're going to develop the strategy to fulfill the goals and here's how we're going to do this. We're going to do the tour management section in three phases. Okay, you guys are still awake and with me, right? Three phases for tour management. Whoever chooses tour management, your three phases are phase one, you will be the opening act for uh, a major artist. So what you will do, easy part, go online, find an artist that works with you, your artist, ass assign yourself to that tour as, a, as an opening act. Now, here's the thing. In reality... There's two ways to, there, well, there's a ton of ways to tour, but there's two main ways to tour in this kind of vein. You can either be an opening act for the entire system of the tour, or you're an opening act for spot dates. And those spot dates mean that today we're going to be in Toledo, and we're going to be the opening act for this band. Tomorrow we're going to go to uh, Cincinnati, and we're going to be the opening act for this band. So instead of being on a full tour system where you're the same opening act for the same artist, you can essentially pick your own route that works for your artist and piggyback off of these individual tour options. Now, you're going to be the opening act at the beginning of the night. Phase two is to become a more supporting act, and the supporting acts are, are the ones that are essentially more directly right before the actual official act. So when you're not opening the night at 7 o'clock when the headliner plays at 11, you're going to be playing the slot right before them. So in strategy two... I'm sorry, strategy three. Uh, wait, what's the strategy? Oh, it's strategy three. Yeah, you're going to identify 10 major cities, venues, and contact info from a major act tour for phase two. So you can pick whoever the act is, but the phase two will be direct support for. And then you're going to put out the info that belongs there. Does that make sense? In the third strategy, so or fourth strategy, the final stage, phase three of the tour, you become the headliner. Your responsibility then is to not only have the venue info and the contact info because you'd have to directly book the show you also have to choose who your opening act and your supporting act will be so you then will have to choose two other artists that'll come in direct support for you as the headliner does that make sense uh i'll tell you the easiest thing you can think about uh, when it comes to touring is all of the acts need to be identifiable uh, as, a, as a specific genre they fit into a classification together but they cannot be so similar 
that uh, it will affect um, the, foc the focal point, should I say, on you standing out as an individual act. Meaning, you know, you, if you, can't, you can't really realistically, I mean, you can now, but you couldn't say, all right, we're going to have you tour with Weezer, but your band sounds just like Weezer because no one will remember you at the end of the night. Um, you can do that if you already have a big name and you were to lump three ba bands that sound alike together that already are established. But when you're looking at an act that's working on developing their tour for a single release, you have to have some identifiable feature. Does that make sense? Um, you know, I mean, I saw I, I saw a uh, uh, you know I saw Muse play with you too, and the funny part is 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 um, I like that they played I like that they played together because Muse is really a lot different than you too, you know, and they're very diverse acts. And when I saw them together, I'm like, this is perfect because I, I think I could watch this whole show from end to end and not get bored. But if I was going to go watch Coldplay in U2, I'd be like, all right, somebody shut off the delay on the guitar and, you know, let's get rid of all the ambience. Someone's got to come through with a clear idea. Oh, yeah. um, and I think that's the, you know, that's the, just the diverseness of making sure that the tour, the tour is set up with acts that are just not so identically threaded that they feel like, you know, they're mind-numbing, and there's no, you know, surge or, or change, you know. But obviously, you're not going to put an act that lights itself on fire with an acoustic folk performer, you know, unless it has to be an acoustic folk performer that lights himself on fire. That would work, uh, so obviously. So you kind of have to keep that in mind. Um, that's no expense for I know, right? And that's it. I mean, I know that's, that was a long conversation, but that's it. So, um... I know, right? Quite a bit of stuff. What I want you to do, real quick, I'm, I'm, I, the big thing I need from you tonight is I need to, I need you to pick your teams. Uh, while you're picking your teams, I'm going to come around and hand out your uh, review list for the midterm. Okay. So do what you need to do and and um, meet and greet and uh, let's get your teams assembled. Aaron, thank you. Did you guys have somebody else? You guys have a fifth person already? Yep. Oh, you, Christian. Oh, okay. You want to, uh, Francisco, you want to jump back there with those guys? You guys already a group? You guys right. setting up your group establishment? Yeah, then you were saying that there's another person in line who just has special needs specialized. You have two other people? Our jobs are this. You know what? We'll do this because you guys are. Um, yeah, how many people did you guys, are you guys accounting for? Yeah, I think it's Yanif. Yanif. Yeah, Yanif. Francisco, why don't we put you over here then? You guys have accounted for two. We're going to put Yanif with you. And then we'll get. Um, huh? I have I have the contact info. Uh, this is the most responsible. Oh, you know, here's what we'll do. Here's what we'll do to make this easy. Hey, guys, if you have, real quick, if you guys have a missing member, what I need before you leave today is I need to know who's in your group, include your missing member. If you only know their first name, that's fine. And then whoever your manager contact is going to be, needs to write their email address that they prefer to be contacted by, what I'll do is I'll send out an email that'll say, you belong to the following group, please contact, instead of you contacting everybody else in the group, please contact the one individual, and I'll, I'll post your email on the, uh, your email address in the email. Does that make sense? So is Yestin going to be, wait, but Yes, it's time.